again, you heard our great esteemed panel of four nurses that will be presenting today. And we're gonna have three questions that we're gonna ask our nurses. And this is gonna be a frank discussion. These are our frontline staff, if she, they're on the job. And so um, let's start off with the questions that we will be asking. So the first question today is we all know that nurses make up the bulk of healthcare workforce and are natural problem solvers and innovators. Nurses are experiencing pressure, fear, exhaustion, fatigue, and ongoing stress. This ongoing stress and trauma has an impact on the frontline nurses' mental health, their safety, and their ability to provide the best possible care. As a frontline nurse, given these current situations, our, um, our nurses today, they're going to explain how they are managing their stress. They are also going to explain what they're doing for self-care, and they're going to provide some advice for the frontline nurses out there. The second question that we will be discussing today is I recently read an article by our esteemed guest panelists today that will come on later today. Uh, Cinda, and um, she was speaking, um, she will be speaking later again, like I said, in this webinar, but this article truly focused on the conditions and the decisions encountered daily by nurses um, during this massive healthcare challenge. Um, but our nurses, they're going to talk about the challenges that they are experiencing, experiencing, and they will also share with you some of the experiences that they are going through. The third question that our panel will be addressing today is, um, I belong to several listservs and they have group, group discussion sites. So more so now in the midst of COVID-19. One of the discussions that I read the other day is centered around COVID-19 and moral injury on the front line. And this particular discussion really centered around vulnerability. It's centered around vulnerability being a strength. And it also centered around if you need help, ask for it. So one of the nurses that was on the group, um, the group that I belong, this particular group that I belong to, she started, she was discussing how she's having issues around her normal daily routine, how this is truly impacting, impacting her life. How this is her new norm. Um, when she goes home in the afternoon, she has to bag up her uniform before entering her house. How when she looks in the mirror, she sees the invitations from her long day of wearing her facial mask. Um, and, and she just talked about the emotions that she's going through, how vulnerable she's feeling. Another nurse, she was a, she's a Gulf War nurse. And she spoke about when she enters her hospital every day, she is seeing the tent lined up and this reminds her of when she was in the war and how she's being conflicted by some of the you know her feelings from being in the gulf war to now having to experience this pandemic on her home front again the nurses they're going to share their stories and they're going to give advice to that vulnerable frontline personnel we're going to start this discussion off with mom with um virginia scott so there are three questions. Okay, so when we think about self-care and what are we doing and how are my teams feeling, I first had to self-assess. I believe that when we self-assess, you know exactly what is the tone of my voice and how are my actions, because as of right now, I have 120 medical staff that's on front lines for the city of Cincinnati. So when I speak, my team needs to listen and they need to mostly be aware that I'm calm. How 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 am I giving directions? And what what is what is my presentation um, like? Um, because we all know that this was an unknown state. And the first, the number one for me is Jenny, self-assess for your team that you're leading was first reaction. Um, I needed to be fully aware how my staff felt to maintain a sense of hope for them. 
because I received several phone calls. What is this going to mean? What do I do? I have a husband that's sick. I, I, can't, I can't go touch a patient. And these are nurses that work every day with the sick population, especially in public health. So I maintain self-assessment, and I turned that into a daily huddle with my team. That daily huddle allowed them to be able to express their concerns, where am I at, how are you feeling? And then when I talk to my nurse managers, I ask them, lean in with your team. Lean in and ask, how are your children doing I'm staying at home? Are you okay? Your husband, you find out a lot of times when you lean in with your staff, my husband is not working, we don't have any food. So it was really that human that human piece, because as nurses, we learn to just jump in and act. And a lot of times with our staff and our nurses, we just jump in. We go, go, go. And I had my managers pull back, ask them how they're doing. Pay attention. Use those assessment skills when you're starting to see that someone is withdrawn and they're not really talking like they used to. And see how they're really doing, because it was a lot of stress during this time. And it was it was so much unknown, and the the – the policies was changing, the symptoms was changing, and now we're hearing asymptomatic, and then, um, you know, I'm hearing a lot of my staff stating that now they're the breadwinner and they never had to be. So for me, um, it was really to self-assess, to maintain what I needed for them. Then what I told my staff, I had to share a little bit, as Tanya just spoke about prayer every day on my desk over here. I read daily devotions. And I pulled something out of it, and I asked the Lord to tell me, show me, take the blinders off so I can ensure that I am delivering the right message for my team. Um, and then for myself, and I even shared with the team one day, I said, I take a bubble bath every day. And they just laughed at me. You think of, every day I'm going to take my bubble bath and I'm going to pray. And I said, do whatever that is for you. Whatever that reflection is for you, whatever that peace is for you, when you step out of bed, just plant your feet and um, take that piece and reflect. So that is one piece that I did for self-care. And then our second question we actually talked about, I think it was challenges. So what challenges did I face? And we did hear what Tanya stated about all the challenges that a lot of the hospital systems are, are going through, the nurses. I'm hearing a lot of PPE. I don't have masks. I don't have the proper masks. Well, within public health, I didn't, per se, my team didn't run into that because we did have the PPE and I did have the resources and I did have the city behind me. I did have the health commissioner and assistant health commissioner behind me. And they knew I have the bulk of the clinical team right now. So whatever I needed, they were right there. If I pick up the phone right now, whether it's 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night, because I am on call for the city, um, I can reach out to one of them, and they were right there. So I didn't really have those challenges, but I will say that my challenges, my, over, my overall challenge has been policy change. As you know, working in government and everything was changing, guidance from CDC and Ohio Department of Health was changing so rapidly that I had to change and be on top of that for my team to ensure that they had um, the latest information. So that was the biggest um, challenge for me, and it was a blessing um, because a lot of uh, other healthcare um, um, clinicians, they didn't have that, so, and it was something that when I was watching that they didn't have the PPE that they needed and things like that. And when we go on to the third question and we actually talk about um, what could I share in my story and, and, and everything, I will still say to push pause. Uh, for my leaders out there, that if you're leading teams and you're leading um, this way, I would say just continue to stay centered because when I found out that this was happening, it was early March, I heard um, the governor state that he was shutting down the schools for the state of Ohio, and I have um, a large amount. I have 102 of my population of nurses uh, work for the Cincinnati Public School Systems, and I said, well, Jenny, what are you about to do? I immediately turned on and prayed and said, God, give me the direction. I went right back to work. I told the health commissioner, it's time to stand up a command center. So I stood up an ICS command center, um, and I pulled every single last one of my nurses in who are now all working remotely, but I pulled them into the auditorium, and I got them on phones. And I, I think that as we continue as leaders in this way, to ensure that our staff, because I, I feel like now, and that was March the 14th I did that, and I stood up my command center, my team was so relaxed and relieved that I had a plan in place that I was able to act and do what we needed to do. And I keep telling them we're going to fight this COVID fight. So that is the end of all of my three questions, but I will say to stay grounded and to push pause, and that's it. Thank you. 
As a frontline nurse, given the current circumstances of the constant exposure to pressure, the fears, the exhaustion, the fatigue, and the ongoing stress that's related to the current outbreak of COVID-19, is kind of explains it as an experience of being in a constant state of crisis management. Working in healthcare, we see the effects of COVID-19 on our peers and on our patients and on our loved ones on a day-to-day -day basis. You turn on the TV and there is continuous coverage of COVID-19. The constant exposure can actually be very overwhelming at times. One has to manage their own personal stress and make sure that they are taking care of themselves in order to provide optimum care to others. I manage my own personal stress by and self-care by actually doing things that I enjoy, such as relaxing activities, like spending time with my husband, reading a good book, watching a movie on TV, listening to music, um, eating healthy, taking a spa day, going for a walk, uh, talking to my animals. I actually have a dog and two cockatiels. Um, or just chatting with my family through video chat. I try to find the humor in little things in everyday life. My advice to frontline nurses would actually be to make time daily to enjoy your favorite relaxing activities. Make sure you eat healthy. Reach out to someone for assistance. You're not alone. If you're struggling with self-care and stress management, reach out to someone. Our organization, Volunteers of America, currently offers our staff either group or individualized uh, support that can help with stress management. Don't be afraid to reach out and talk to somebody. And remember to find the humor in the little things. So we encountered many challenges during the COVID-19 outbreak. Uh, two of the main challenges I'd like to discuss are kind of intertwined, and that's communication and staffing. So I want to talk about staffing first. Staff availability became very limited. Um, the available staff that did work, they worked a lot of hours, a lot of days in a row to just make sure that our patients received the care that they deserved, which oftentimes led to staff exhaustion. We were also so busy providing that care that we didn't have the time to reach out to the family members to give them updates on their loved one that was staying at the facility. This led to heightened fears and um, it also you know, led to emotional outbursts from the family members. There were many times that the nurses would receive a phone call from a family member that was upset and they would scream and yell at these nurses that were already exhausted from all the hours that they had put in. On the other end of the spectrum though, imagine if you were the family member and your loved one was in a facility that um, you hear there's an outbreak of COVID and you're not allowed to visit due to the federal regulations and the restrictions for visitations but you don't hear from anybody for a couple of days about your loved one. I mean, I can understand how that can be very upsetting and it can heighten those fears and anxiety. Um, so the experience actually gave us the opportunity to create an avenue of communication for our family members. So a call center was actually created so that when family members called, they can actually speak to a live operator and that live operator was able to let them know that um, we would reach out to them as soon as possible. They also categorized these calls so that we would know who the appropriate person was to return the phone calls. And we took turns following up, you know, returning these phone calls um, and talking to these family members, which decreased a lot of the anxiety and the fears that the family members were experiencing. Some of the other challenges also included um, having those difficult conversations with family members about the uh, end of life choices for their loved ones as they were transitioning to the end of their life. 
we worked as hard as we could to try and save lives, um, but to have so many lives lost in such a short time frame can be very challenging for anyone. It is very devastating sometimes. It tends to make one feel helpless, um, but as a nurse, our experiences can also be helpful. We analyze our challenges and our experiences and which can, you know, actually produce new guidelines, new protocols or new systems or new standards that can be very beneficial um, in the future guiding other healthcare workers. I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to share my story. As a director of nursing in a long-term skilled care facility, I have many responsibilities and obligations as a leader. These obligations are to my peers and to my patients. As an RN, I have a duty to provide the best care that I can. We came so limited on our staff availability that the nursing management actually took uh, turns doing shifts to help provide that direct patient care. We worked side by side with our nursing staff one night I was actually working on our designated unit for our COVID positive patients and I had multiple patients that were actually transitioning to the end of their life. They were dying. They chose not to have ventilation. They only chose comfort measures such as oxygen and medications if needed. They chose to treat in place. I worked all night listening to the agonal breathing, the gasping for air and the noise from the oxygen concentrators that were turned up. It was heart-wrenching. It was heart-wrenching to see and hear as the CNA and I provided that comfort and that compassionate care. It took everything I had not to cry. It reminded me of my loved ones that I have lost in the last few years. I struggled because as a leader, I'm supposed to be that strong support for that CNA and that patient that is dying. It occurred to me that it was actually an honor to assist that CNA in providing that compassionate care and to provide that comfort to our patient as they died with dignity. The only advice that I could probably provide is that Make sure you provide compassionate care. Make sure you respect patients' choices. Make sure you recognize your own limitations. Make sure you use good coping mechanisms and don't ever be afraid to reach out for help. Okay, so for the first question, um, as far as important, it's important to take control of our mental health and try our best to focus on self-care when we're away from work. Um, we have to protect ourselves first in order to best serve our patients. Um, I try to do the same thing, assess how I'm feeling to help my nurses, because self-care for the nurses is more important than ever, especially now during the pandemic. As far as for me, um, I, my self-care is I try to spend time with my husband. My daughter's in Los Angeles, so we video chat and talk a lot. But also to do the things that I really enjoy when I go home from working, which um, I'm not listening to the news. I'm reading more. I try to listen to the news maybe 30 minutes a day because I just find it's too much for me when I go home. I also um, go outdoors as much as I can. I also have a dog that I walk a lot. Um, I like to cook. I'm just doing more enjoyable things. I'm also finding that um, I'm sleeping more and I think it's important to get a lot of sleep. My nurses too, they do six to two here. Um, well, you didn't read my bio, but I'll just tell you a little bit about what I do right now. Um, I work in an opioid, I'm the nurse manager of an opioid uh, dependent population. We have 150 patients that are inpatient. I also do, for the VOA, I work at one of their OMH housing programs for um, 
young adults that have uh, maxed out of foster care. And um, I do that on the weekends. And also other older adults that, adults that have comorbidity in the housing program. So um, the other thing I try to do with my nurses is if they need it, to encourage to talk to other mental health resources and other healthcare professionals and staff that can understand their struggle. Um, they're providing, I know OASAS and um, other sources are providing a lot of mental health providers and people that you can talk to for frontline providers. Um, our, I like personally, I share, I've been sharing a lot of my stuff with the staff and also with other medical professionals that I happen to have in my family. Um, my brother's a doctor and that helps me too. Even though he's in Georgia, he's not in New York City because we're getting hit so hard here. It's been really, really um, strenuous for the nurses. Um, and I just try to be there for them as much as I can, as well as um, for our clients. Um, the stresses that I'm finding, the common stresses that we're finding is workload and, and emotional strain. Um, and the stresses of only, it's always like that in nursing, but I'm finding it's been magnified by the pandemic. Um, right now, my nurses were working on 50% staff because uh, a nurse is sick, another one's husband, unfortunately, has been on a ventilator for six weeks. He's, um, was, he's a cop. And um, then I have another nurse that's just too old to come in and has a lot of comorbidity. So um, my nurses, we've been working with 50% nursing staff right now, and that's been really challenging. Um, because of the shortage of staff, uh, we do the same thing. We assess every morning and talk about our fears. We're trying to educate the clients more because like I said, a lot of the clients that we have, they are, they're not wearing their masks. They're not social distancing. Um, it's very hard to educate them. I think some of them are um, just not getting the, the real importance of the social distancing. So that's been really difficult because of the, they are living, they don't have their own living space actually. So that's been very difficult. The other thing that we're seeing is an increase in drug and alcohol use in the patients here. Um, last month we've had two overdoses, but it wasn't fatal overdoses, but a lot of our clients are turning to drugs and alcohol. And even though they're not supposed to be going out, they always kind of find, a, unless it's an emergency, we've been trying to keep them in, only go into specialty clinics, but they do find a way of getting drugs into the facility. And that's been really challenging because on top of the day-to-day -day activity that we have here, um, and then you have to deal with overdoses or someone that needs to be sent out because we're worried about the substances that the they take in during the day. So that's been really challenging as well. Um, and as far as the last question with things that I've experienced through my nursing career, um, the, the most thing that I could say is as far as I was a nurse since 1981, I was just out of nursing school. So I did, when I first came out, I was in medicine and that's when AIDS was coming out. And this is what this is, re is reminding of. It wasn't even AIDS at that time. It was fever of unknown origin. It was, uh, it was grids. Nobody even knew it was AIDS. And I remember um, they didn't know if it was airborne. They didn't know how you even got it. And I was one of the nurses that was, that was a frontline nurse then going into and um, just caring for the, these terminal patients. And um, it just brings back a lot of memory of all I can say is that uh, my resilience and that nurses are resilient and to um, just be there for the clients and as much as we can and just for ourselves too and for the other nurses. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rose. And now we're gonna turn it over to Donna Webb. Thank you, Tanya. Well, first of all, I, I feel strongly that support and encouragement is essential both before and during an outbreak in our facilities. We really need to approach these situations with fresh eyes, ask our people what they need, develop our response based on the needs they've expressed, and effectively and compassionately communicate with them. 
These are very uneasy times for all. Even though as healthcare providers, we understand what needs to be done, we know we don't have all the tools to do it the way we were trained. We can provide support and encouragement to all of our team members by creating a supportive work culture, which provides a safe environment for staff to openly discuss vulnerability, stress, burnout, and any other barriers to their well being. Having the hard conversations, and they are hard, related to having access to appropriate personal protective equipment being exposed to COVID-19 at work and taking the infection home to their families, feeling uncertain whether their organizations would support or take care of their personal and family needs if they were to become infected. It's wise for leaders to check out what is available so they can communicate uh, that type of support with their employees. Having access to childcare during increased work hours and school closures. Possibly having discussions around getting support for other personnel and family needs, such as food and lodging, as work hours and demands increase. These are all realities that staff worry about. And in, in this pandemic, when our staff are working these long hours, it is our responsibility to address these concerns with our employees as we want them to be able to work additional hours and at least provide suggestions for solutions to their possible concerns. We can't fix it all, but maybe we can provide suggestions to assist them. Another aspect of support and encouragement would include enabling cooperation and collaboration between management, departments, and all staff that leads to an overall culture of support and encouragement during these trying times. You may encounter a few leadership employees who are equally concerned at this time and also need support. Being transparent and as proactive as possible does help us guide our teams during the, this pandemic. Lastly, we need to remember we need to be present, visible, and available. During a crisis, leaders should be accessible because it's not always possible to walk around our facilities and talk to all of our staff in person. We need to let employees know how they can best reach us with any updates or questions. Particularly during a crisis, employees have a need to hear from their leaders frequently. When leaders appear calm, concerned, knowledgeable, and in charge, staff feel encouraged and are more likely to have confidence that things are under control and will be fine. Some of the challenges and experiences, well, there are many challenges that our nurses are experiencing during these unprecedented times. Some of the challenges include the inability to follow best practices or clinical standards. For example, as nurses, we all know we're taught rigorous infection control and prevention practices as it relates to transmission-based precautions. Currently, our nurses are having to discount their training and follow crisis guidelines when performing care for our residents. Using face masks that are not typically approved for best practice and using the guidance for face mask reuse. Who would have ever thought that as a nurse, we would use one face mask, if we're lucky, per day to take care of individuals with transmission-based precautions? Another challenge is the lack of supplies and PPEs to do our job correctly and effectively. As nurses, we know that the current practices will assist in reducing some negative outcomes. However, they are not anywhere near any way near what we have been taught and what we know is the best standard of practice. In addition, we have to make some difficult ethical decisions in the current pandemic situation. These range from not having families near while a resident is actively dying up to a point of determining which medications and treatment that were prescribed may now be determined non-essential in order for us to provide minimal care with minimal staff. Staff are scared, staff are anxious, 
And once a COVID positive resident is identified, there are staff who are scared to come to work. Um, they're scared to come back to the facility. This is our reality. As far as some advice um, to be able to give, we have seen the impact on our team members, their families, and the residents they care for. Long-term care has a deeper impact than most realize. The residents we take care of are part of our family. Their family is part of our family. We know their children, grandchildren, and so many others as their loved one is with us longer than a typical hospital stay. Our staff and our nurses are experiencing loss every day. Loss of the residents, loss of a family member, and loss of normalcy of life. The impact goes deep and we know that all are experiencing some level of loss. We need to take one day at a time. As leaders, we need to think positive. A leader's attitude is contagious. Leaders are truly dealers in hope. Even in extreme crisis, an upbeat can-do attitude really keeps people going. We need to remember to take a break and take care of ourselves. It's amazing what five minutes can do. We need to prioritize and focus. Every day brings new challenges and unfortunately loss until this pandemic is resolved. Having a focus for the day helps, keep, helps our team to move forward. We need to talk and communicate. This is so important. Everyone has fears and we need to be open and honest and support each other during these times. And then finally, we need to remember to celebrate the small successes. Thank you. You know, I think it's a really important moment to pause um, and to honor the, you know, we have more, almost 4 million nurses in this country. And um, I think what this pandemic has made absolutely clear is that um, we cannot uh, have a healthy nation without a healthy nursing workforce. And so it's really essential that, first of all, that we acknowledge that we really can't do our jobs unless we have the support and resources that we need to be able to do that. And so I think on the one hand, it's a call to action for all of us to uh, really permanently dismantle the, the barriers that have created the kinds of distress that in some ways are avoidable. So there's, there's that piece. And then the other piece is that um, in the midst of all of that and all the challenges, there are incredible examples of nurses uh, who are using their incredible competence and their skillful and astute assessment. Uh, we talked about doing self-assessment, their courage and tenacity and compassion on a day-to-day -day basis. And I think one of the things that I would hope we could walk away with is not overlooking the power of our presence. And, um, you know, when we have nothing else in terms of physical resources, we always have that. And um, that's a huge uh, blessing for many people. So I want to just leave you, I don't know who wrote this, but um, I have found these phrases to be really important right now. And you might want to think about using these um, at the beginning of your shift or at the end of your shift um, to, to kind of help orient yourself toward um, how you want to show up. Strengthen me to see the wonder of my work through the eyes of those I serve. Enable me to serve others with respect, compassion, humility, courage, and love. And let my light, let my work be a light to those in need and a beacon of hope for those who despair. So 
I offer that as a um, kind of medicine for all of my colleagues out there who are doing the best they can in these incredible circumstances. So thank you. Thank you everyone for being here um, and uh, stay tuned. We'll be having some more webinars.